One of the greatest books you'll ever read is the Parayana, the poetic works of Bhagawan Sri Ramana Maharshi. Now, where better to speak about this than in Tiruvannamalai? Behind me, you see the holy mountain of Arunachala. And at the base of Arunachala, that's where Ramana Ashram is. And when you go to Ramana Ashram, they will chant every day the Parayana. Now, you'll ask, what is the Parayana? Now, as I said, it's the poetic works of Bhagwan, but these are the compositions and translations of Bhagwan Sri Ramana Maharshi. And there are a lot of books that Bhagwan actually translated through his life that a lot of people don't know about. And you find out about this actually in the Parayana. And he actually extracts some of the greatest verses of these texts. Now, in the Sanatana Dharma tradition, it is often said that the words of a great jnani or what comes from a great jnani is equal to that of the Vedas. Now, that's why this Parayana is very important because the translations and compositions of Bhagawan are so deep. Now, you got to remember, he's translating a lot of these into Tamil and we are fortunate enough to have this in English. And in my opinion, which is one of the essential teachings within the Parayana, is the Divai Kalotaram. Now, the Divai Kalotaram is one of 28 Agamas, the traditional Hindu scriptures that they believe are divinely inspired. Now, in English, we would translate the Divai Kalotaram as the knowledge that transcends time revealed to Divai. And the Divai Kalotaram contains 24,000 verses, if you can believe it. Now, we're not going to go into 24,000 verses, obviously. But Bhagwan Sri Ramana Maharshi actually went to the painstaking task of extracting the 84 core verses of the Divai Kalotram that he actually translated for our benefit. And the one I want to read to you today is about the nature of the monkey mind. Now, the Divai Kalotram states, The mind, hankering after things of this world, is more restless than a monkey. If one controls it and one is established in the state of Sarvashunya, one will attain liberation directly. Here you see Ramana talk about the mind in relation to a monkey. Now, monkey mind is a popular term in most languages throughout Asia. I remember being in a monastery in Thailand, in a forest monastery in the Theravada Buddhist tradition, and the main monk there was pretty harsh on the monkey mind within society, and understandably so when we understand the nature of the mind. Even if you just look into the nature of your own mind, you'll notice the inability at times to make the mind calm. The mind is just jumping here and there as Ramana said, like a monkey. So when we look at the nature of the mind, we are going from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, trying to satisfy whatever need our mind has. But as we discover, especially within Buddhism, the nature of the mind is empty, spontaneous, and free. But we continually try to fill it up because the natural activity of the mind is to be restless, but its essential nature is empty, spontaneous, and free. So it's trying to fix itself, right? The mind is trying to fix itself in a position, but it can't do that because the nature of itself, as I said, is empty, spontaneous, and free. So the more you put into it, it's like throwing things into an empty, bottomless pit. But that's what we continually do with our mind. We continually put things into our mind from the external world, which then becomes part of our samskaras, our subconscious, which samskaras can be translated as subliminal imprints and mental impressions. And so we continually feed our mind, even though our mind cannot fix itself. And so then what happens is we train our mind to be overly active. We unconsciously do this through our life, right? We train it to be overly active. And we live in a culture and a society where we're told that we need to seek things to make our life more rich, which is completely untrue from the Eastern perspective. Now, in the Divai Kalotram, it says if one can control us and one can become established in Sarvashunya, then one will attain liberation, will attain enlightenment. Now you ask what Sarvashunya is. Sarvashunya is a state devoid of all sense objects. So a mind that is completely free of all sense objects. You are completely empty and your mind is not jumping here or there chasing sensory experience. And then one attains or one comes in contact with the Atman, the undifferentiated consciousness, which is identical with Brahman. Now the job for all of us in this world is bringing that monkey mind to complete stillness. Now that's easier said than done, but those who become aware that they actually have a monkey mind are on the path. 
the sad reality in this world is most people don't even know that they operate within the monkey mind. And so we have the world that we have around us. Now, I'm not saying that the entire world is in conflict and we have problems everywhere. That would be an over-exaggeration. But the problems that we do have and the conflicts that we do have come from that monkey mind. And so it's very important to continually bring your mind back into the Atman back into the undifferentiated consciousness within your spiritual practice, but also within your daily life. Because the more you do that, the more you abide in that, the less food you are feeding that irritable monkey that we all have within our mind. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Mm-hmm.